Hi guys, I'm Sangeeta Krishnan and I welcome you back on behalf of Chatran Josh to our video series. So the topic that we're going to discuss today is the Dokla Mesho. So as we are all aware, the armies of India and China have been involved in a border standoff in the region of Dokla. So basically it all started in June 2017 when the Chinese troops entered the region with construction vehicles and road building material with the intention of building a road that can sustain heavy vehicles. India retaliated to this move by sending its troops to stop the construction. So basically before we go into the current scenario let us really understand that why is this region so important to both India and China. So Doklam is actually located at the tri junction of India, China and Bhutan. So while India does not lay any claim to it both China and Bhutan consider it to be a part of their territory. According to China, Doklam is located in the Zingaz area of Tibet bordering Sikkim. In fact, China also released a map recently that shows the area as a part of it. Strategically speaking, for India, this region is very important as it lies very close to Siliguri corridor. The corridor is often known as the chicken neck as it is the lifeline of India and the only connection of India with the northeast. So China's presence in the region would prove to be a threat for India as it would bring China within the striking distance of the corridor. China backs its claim to the region by referring to the 1890 Convention of Calcutta. The Convention of Calcutta was signed between the Great Britain and China. It sought to create a boundary line between Tibet and Sikkim. So, but India, however, argues here that the tri-junction area does not involve in the convention. Another important agreement is the Shimla Accord of 1914. It was signed between Britain, China, and Tibet. It defines the boundary between China and Tibet and India and Tibet, and the line is called as the Mekmohan Line. So, the China has not agreed to the terms of this accord. In fact, even Tibet refused to recognize it. but the accord was formally published in 1938 so coming back to the recent scenario another important agreement that explains the situation a bit better is the 1949 agreement between bhutan and india so that agreement stated that india could interfere and give guidance to bhutan on all its diplomatic and defense affairs so the agreement was followed up by a 2007 new friendship treaty agreement which again reinstated the mutual trust and cooperation between both the nations the agreement also stated this time that both bhutan and india are sovereign nations it had 10 articles the most important article of the agreement is article 2 which states that india can interfere or intervene in any strategic move that can cause loss to a territory of bhutan so this clearly explains the current scenario and why india is intervening in the doklam issue so while the world is focusing on north korea and what may happen or may not happen between it and us tension is clearly growing in asia and this is clearly concerning as both china and india are nuclear armed states they are also the world's fastest developing economies so a rift between them may not only affect asia but the world at large so let's first understand for india that what does it stand to lose if this situation continues to go on like this firstly most of india's investments come from china so if the situation continues to worsen it may discourage the chinese investors and it may impact the economy of india another most important thing is that a major of india's exports go to china so if it continues if the dispute continues like this then it may again impact india's economic structure coming to what china is going to lose from this situation india is its biggest market a major of china's imports come to india so if this situation continues to worsen china would lose that link so as the situation is worsening the only country who has come out in open support of india and bhutan is japan the us has also tried to resolve the situation by encouraging both china and india to hold high level talks so what may happen or what will happen that only time will tell but the suggested way forward is both the countries to hold talks at the highest level without any further delay with this i conclude my topic for today keep watching our videos for detailed information on raging topics and log on to jatinjoosh.com to read more on current affairs thank you so much India and US to co-host Global Entrepreneurship Summit at Hyderabad in November 2017.
Venkaiya Naidu sworn in as 13th vice president of the country. Parliament passes banking amendment bill empowering RBI to deal with willful defaulters. Venezuela's new constituent assembly declares itself superior to all other government bodies. India ratifies second commitment period of Kyoto Protocol. Prasoon Joshi appointed chairperson of Central Board of Film Certification. Citizens of 80 countries including India can now enter Qatar without visa. Ministerial meeting of BIMSTEC sets off in Kathmandu. Lok Sabha passes state banks repeal an amendment bill 2017. Delhi Assembly passes Minimum Wages, Amendment Bill 2017, Netaji Subhash Varsity Bill. India and US to co-host Global Entrepreneurship Summit at Hyderabad in November 2017. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that India and US will co-host the Global Entrepreneurship Summit at Hyderabad from 28th to 30th November 2017. Modi said in his tweet that the summit is a unique opportunity for bringing together entrepreneurs and startups with global leaders. Ivanka Trump, the daughter of US President Donald Trump, will lead the US delegation to GES 2017 in India. Venkaiya Naidu sworn in as 13th Vice President of the country. He has been administered the oath of office and secrecy by President Ram Nath Govind at a special function at Rashtrapati Bhavan on 11th August 2017. After the ceremony, Naidu took charge as the chairman of Rajya Sabha at Parliament House and presided over the proceedings in the Upper House. Naidu was elected as the Vice President on 5th August 2017 by defeating opposition candidate Gopal Krishna Gandhi. Parliament passes Banking Amendment Bill empowering RBI to deal with willful defaulters. Banking Regulation Amendment Bill 2017 seeks to amend the Banking Regulation Act 1949 to insert provisions for handling cases related to stressed assets of banks. The bill will replace the Banking Regulation Amendment Ordinance 2017 which was promulgated on 4th May 2017. The legislation will also enable the central government to authorize RBI to direct banking companies to resolve specific stressed assets by initiating insolvency resolution process. Venezuela's new constituent assembly declares itself superior to all other government bodies. The assembly approved a decree that obliges other government bodies to recognize its wide-ranging powers. The decree also prohibits the National Assembly from taking any action that would interfere with the Constituent Assembly's laws. However, foreign governments and international bodies have refused to recognize the pro-government body. India ratifies second commitment period of Kyoto Protocol. With this, India became the 80th country to accept the amendment relating to the second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. Kyoto Protocol is an international treaty which extends the 1992 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Kyoto Protocol was adopted in Kyoto, Japan on 11th December 1997. Prasoon Joshi appointed chairperson of Central Board of Film Certification. Prasoon Joshi is appointed as chairperson of the CBFC for a period of three years. With this appointment, Joshi has replaced former chairman Pahalaj Nehlani. The government has also reconstituted the existing CBFC with immediate effect for a period of three years or until further orders. Citizens of 80 countries, including India, can now enter Qatar without visa. The Qatari government announced that citizens belonging to 80 countries, including India, Canada, US and UK, can now enter Qatar without the need of applying for a visa. 
the visitors from the select countries would be issued a multi-entry waiver completely free of charge at the point of entry upon presentation of a valid passport having a minimum validity of six months and a confirmed onward or return ticket. The move aims to encourage more people to travel to Qatar and discover its renowned hospitality, cultural heritage and natural treasures. Ministerial meeting of BIMSTEC sets off in Kathmandu. The 15th Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectorial Technical and Economic Cooperation BIMSTEC ministerial meeting was held in Kathmandu, Nepal. The two-day meet was inaugurated by Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba and chaired by Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs Krishna Bahadur Mahara. The main agenda of the meeting was to finalize a free trade agreement among the BIMSTEC members including negotiations on market access for professionals and reducing the duty on trading goods. Lok Sabha passes state banks repeal an amendment bill 2017 the bill seeks to repeal state bank of india act 1959 and state bank of hyderabad act 1956 it also seeks to amend state bank of india act 1955 to remove references of subsidiary banks the bill was framed following the merger of five associates with the parent sbi Delhi Assembly passes Minimum Wages Amendment Bill 2017, Netaji Subhash Varsity Bill. Minimum Wages Amendment Bill 2017 aims to hike minimum wages of workers in Delhi. NSIT Bill 2017 aims to give the Netaji Subhash Institute of Technology the status of a university. NSIT bill carries an additional change regarding the appointing authority in the university.